Welcome to the IVF Journey with Dr. Michael Chapman, the podcast for couples who struggle with infertility and want to fulfill their dreams of becoming parents. In this podcast, you'll learn actionable strategies to deal with infertility from Dr. Michael Chapman, or Prof as he's affectionately known. Prof is the co-founder of IVF Australia and is a leading Australian infertility specialist who has helped over 3,000 couples realise their dreams of becoming parents. To access previous episodes packed with ideas, solutions and tips that actually work, head over to Dr. Chapman's IVF podcast on iTunes. You can also ask questions by contacting Dr. Chapman's rooms on 1800 111 483 or by emailing him michael.chapman at ivf.com.au. That first cry of a baby born after the long journey of IVF remains one of the most beautiful experiences in the world. As an obstetrician and an IVF specialist, I've had the privilege of experiencing this over many thousands of times in my long career, but I still remain moved by each baby's first cry. It signifies the end of a long journey and the beginning of a new life. This is Professor Michael Chapman, co-founder of IVF Australia and host of the IVF Journey podcast. Thanks for tuning in. To access all the previous episodes, head over to my website, www.theivfjourney.com and select IVF Journey Podcast from the navigation menu. You'll also be able to find the various services that we provide at IVF Australia. Hi there. thought today we'd talk about a hot topic of the moment, which is surrogacy. Why is it a hot topic? Because it's quite controversial because it pushes the boundaries of parenthood to places that was never meant to be in many people's eyes. So surrogacy involves the carriage of a pregnancy by a woman for another couple or another woman or another man, in fact. Surrogacy probably has occurred over time, like thousands of years of time, as part of normal culture in some areas where a woman is inseminated by the partner of another couple. The woman uses her eggs, but then at the end of the day hands the child over to the commissioning couple. In Australia, such types of surrogacy are not permitted based upon the NH and MRC guidelines. The types of surrogacy that are permitted are where the woman who is the surrogate, who's going to carry the pregnancy, receives eggs and sperm from individuals other than herself. So eggs from a woman who may be the intending parent, or if she has no eggs, from a donor egg giver, and the sperm of her partner. An embryo is created and then replaced in the surrogate. She carries the child and delivers the baby, and the baby is then adopted by the intending parents or the commissioning parents. Experiences in the United States have shown the potential for disaster in surrogacy arrangements. That a woman, having carried a child for nine months, decides that she doesn't want to give the child up. The worst possible outcome for the commissioning parents. So in Australia, we do everything possible to avoid that occurrence. So by insisting that the gametes that create the embryo to be given to the surrogate are genetically not hers, immediately makes that child less likely to be wanted by the surrogate. Secondly, both the surrogate and the intending parents are required to have formal legal advice as to the contractual arrangements between themselves and contractual arrangements about the future of that child. In our clinic, we also insist upon a psychological assessment of the surrogate with the hope of being able to select out women more likely to want to keep the child at the end of the day and not allow that procedure to go through. It's also important uh, part of the process is that the ethics committees of each of the IVF units 
has the final stamp of approval uh, in a surrogacy arrangement so that the cases are discussed in a broad-based NHMRC ethics committee. So the important aspect from the clinic's perspective and from the intending parent's perspective is that the baby will be theirs at the end of the day. Let's look at the reasons why you'd want to have surrogacy. Let's start by saying that surrogacy for the purpose of not wanting to carry a baby and damage your beautiful 35-year-old body would just be unacceptable in Australia. However, there is stories from Hollywood and elsewhere in the world that suggest that such arrangements do occur. The very important wealthy businesswoman who would love to have a child of her own but doesn't want to carry it. Again, that would not be acceptable to an ethics committee in Australia. So what situations are we happy with? These predominantly are where a woman's uterus is absent or has been shown unable to carry a child or where the woman has a medical condition that would be life-threatening should she conceive. To not have a uterus at all can be congenital. There are women born without a uterus. Nature has made a big mistake. But those women often have normal ovaries with normal eggs and therefore she can have a baby of her genetic makeup together with her partner's sperm being carried by a surrogate. The other group of women who don't have a uterus are women who sadly in their reproductive years have developed a cancer that has required the uterus to be removed. You can also have a woman whose uterus has been damaged by fibroids and the operations associated with that that make the uterus unable to carry a child, to hold a child. And we're also an increasing number of women who've been through multiple IVF cycles with wonderful embryos, even proven on genetic testing to be normal, are now asking whether it's possible for their embryos to be carried by a surrogate. And most clinics now would be accepting of multiple failure of IVF as an indication for surrogacy. The most difficult part of a surrogacy arrangement is actually finding a surrogate. In Australia, it is illegal to have a commercial surrogate arrangement, i.e. you cannot pay a person for the privilege of carrying a child. In the NHMRC guidelines, there is commentary about reasonable expenses. And obviously, carrying a child for nine months of not being able to work for a significant part of that time would, for most people, be a reasonable expense if covered at normal labour rates. So interestingly, in a recent case in Queensland, a judge has deemed that 21,000 reimbursement to a surrogate, albeit that was in the United States, was a reasonable expense and therefore he classified that arrangement as an altruistic arrangement. This has only happened in the last three months, and it will be interesting to see whether that transposes into a monetary sum that we could be offering surrogates to carry children in Australia. Most surrogates that I've been involved with were friends or relatives of the individual couple, and those individual couples fell into the categories of previous cancer or not having a uterus at all. So there are women out there prepared to carry a baby for another woman. Women who've had babies themselves feel very positive about the whole experience. In Australia in 2015, there were 59 births to women who had been acting as surrogates. So it's not a large number, but certainly is an area of our ART science that is expanding. And don't forget that you can access all the previous episodes by going to our website www.theivfjourney.com and select IVF Journey Podcast from the navigation menu. Thank you for listening to The IVF Journey with Dr. Michael Chapman, the podcast which helps couples negotiate their way through the IVF journey all the way to parenthood. You can also ask questions by contacting Dr. Chapman's rooms on 1800 111 483 or by emailing him michael.chapman at ivf.com.au.